Hello and welcome. It's the chat. My name is Manny Onomono. My guest on the program today is somebody who, since 1985, has been winning all kinds of medals. Gold, silver, bronze. What does she look like now? Chief Mrs. Falilat Ogunkoya Omotayo is a Nigerian former track and field athlete, two-time Olympic medalist and sports enthusiast who is still dedicated to giving back to the Nigerian sports industry. Born on the 5th of December 1968, Falilat attended St. John's Anglican Primary School and later moved to Sijuade Primary School, Ileife Ojun State, where she completed her primary education. Thereafter, she went to Odelemo Community High School for her post-primary education and subsequently attended the teacher's training college in Shagamu. She ventured fully into sports in her high school in 1983. While running as a junior athlete in 1984, she won the African Zone Junior Championships in Accra in 1986. She won a gold medal in 200 meters at the inaugural edition of the International Amateur Athletics Federation IAAF World Junior Championships in Athens. In 1989, she graduated into running 400 meters and in that year won a gold medal at the African Championships in Lagos. She was later selected to represent Africa at the IAAF World Cup in athletics in Spain, where she earned a bronze medal. This move earned her a scholarship to Mississippi State University, where she bagged a degree in education and represented her college in several races. Fortunately, she was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1998 after she became the first person in the school's history to win an Olympic medal during her stay. After 20 years of burning the tracks, Falilat retired in 2004. She currently manages the Falilat Ogunkoya Sports Foundation. She is dedicated to grooming young athletes, especially in primary and secondary schools. Besides serving as a special assistant on sports to the former governor of Ogun State, she is also the chairperson of Ogun State Athletics Federation and a member of the Nigerian Olympic Committee. She is married to Professor Luasheng Omotayo and is blessed with a son. You're smiling. It's good to know that I am face to face with Falilat Ogunkoya, the great Falilat Ogunkoya. Now it's Falilat Ogunkoya Omotayo. M O N, of course. That's M O N minus E Y or plus E Y. I'm still expecting the E Y. Ah, really? Yes. What would you do with that? <laughs> it's so good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. How do you cope? I, I was asking someone the other day, how would an athlete, so with all the muscles and the rest of that, cope? You know, after athletics. After athletics, the muscle become down. You lift weight less. The training is less. So all those muscles turn to fat. I mean, your routine definitely would have changed. So it's more relaxing now. Yes, than of, when course, you were of running. course, of course. And yes. when you are competing, they give you strictly what you can do. No ice cream. No clubbing. <laughs> no french fries. No yam, mm. no coco yam. There's so many things. Are you serious? No clubbing? No Are you clubbing. saying you athletes were not clubbing in your days as athletes? No, no. Maybe after if you go to like, you know, have privilege to be in a golden league, which is Diamond League now. After that, meet all of us dance, we eat, you know, some people that want to drink wine. But the next day is another business. You are going to another meet. Who taught you how to run? My game master. Why did you want to run? When I was in school, primary school, my game masters, I have sisters. My father, when we come from a polygamy family, we are a lot. My father and I had like seven wives. Wow. So How we, many children? About 30 some. 
30 something. Mm. So, do you remember your brothers and sisters? All of them? Yes, my father taught us that we are from the same one father and one mother. He showed, you know, my father has good control of the house. So, I have my stepsisters from the, the same mother, there are two. Me and myself from my own mother, we were four, running for our primary school. So, I'm the youngest of them. So, we give the button. So, when we are in primary school, we are from the same father, well, running well, the I mean, same four by one for my primary school. something children. That yeah. could have been a village or a clan. At least. <laughs> yes. So, it's just only four of you out of the 30 the something who yes. had reason to run. Yes, only four of us. And then we were in primary school. And can you believe I'm the only one that continued? And I started playing table tennis because my uncle, I call him Beshi, his name is Bashiru, he has a table. So I'm the one in charge of that table. Mm. When my teachers from my primary school and some secondary school and few people come around to play the table, I'm in charge. So I play table tennis. I run track. So after my game master then encouraged me to do track, but I still stick back and play table. When was your first competition ever? It was uh, all secondary school in Remo Kingdom, which is that the same stadium, Remo International Stadium. This in is the Shagamu States. In, yes, in Shagamu. You so won the race? I or? won the 100, 200, 1,500 long jump. And then we raced in the 4x4. You mean you won everything? So they told me Nobody me, was competing with you. Everybody, we were all there. It's all secondary <laughs> school. It's so when, when, when did you come into national prominence? I think that was 1984. Okay. They have all secondary school in the lorry. And then after that competition in Shagamu, and then Ogun State picked me to represent Ogun State. Hmm. How did you feel? Did you ever know that you were going to do athletics at that level? Not really. Well, you know, when I saw the two coaches fighting for me to pick, do I want to pick table tennis or I want to pick track and field? And I look at myself and say, the only place I know that I can be free is when I'm running. Really? Yes. How many medals do you have? You know, all together, Fanny well, Lat. You know, I never did count it. Where are your medals, by the way, Fanny Lat? The prominent medals, I would say the where I said prominent medals, Olympic medals, World Indoor medals, Goodwill Games medals, Diamond Leagues medals, uh, Golden League then are in the US. Do you know anytime I They are in the United States. Yes. Is it because you won them outside Nigeria? That's why you kept them there. Yeah, because anytime when I finish competition, I go back to US for my training. You know, but most of the one that all African games, all Nigeria, you know, my dad kept all my medals. Oh really? She has a box. Let's even talk about your most favorite medal. Which one is it? Ninety six. Nineteen ninety six gold medal? No, bronze. Bronze medal. You know, if you look at Atlanta. I gave Nigeria her first medal, individual medal. No female have ever won individual medal in the Olympics. What about your last medal ever in athletics? What was that? 98, I won a gold. Uh, that was in a Goodwill Games. Mm -hmm. I won a gold. And then 98, I was trying the best in the world. 98, I was the World Cup of Athletics. That now we call it Continental. Cup. Mm -hmm. I won a gold in the 400 meters and I won gold in the 200 meters. And I won a bronze 89 and 10 years later I came back and won the gold. Every time you win a medal, is it worth money? Yeah, a few of them. The one at the uh, Diamond League, now Golden League. My time was Golden League. The Diamond League 1998 from IAF because you have to run series of meets for you to go to the final. So that one was pretty good. I think the winning was $50,000. Wow. And then the I other one that. was World Cup of Athletics where I won two medals. And then 99, I won World Indoor Silver in the 400 meters Indoor. 
And you see, as a Nike athlete, Nike gives you money for, for wearing the shoe. And then the IAF gives. The only people that doesn't really... My own days, the other people during this, the last 10 years, I think they were very lucky because the government gives little back. But during my own days, it wasn't that really. We just have to run, compete for yourself, for your family, and for Nigeria. In, in your opinion, who is in Nigeria the richest Nigerian athletes? I think most of them are footballers. No, 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 I'm talking about athletes Athletics. now, yes. Athletics, I would say... Are you not looking at yourself I would in the say, mirror? Yes, a little bit. <laughs> but what I've said that... Are you the richest like, no, I would Nigerian say I am. athlete? I would say blessing. Blessing of Hanbury. Mm -hmm. But she's hardly done how many years in athletics? Uh, or is it because the rules have changed? The rules have changed. More money is into, into sport. Do you okay. coach for the lads? Coach? Wow. Huh. I would love, love to coach, but Nigeria, our own coaching is really different from other people. Why do you say that? Mm. The way Nigeria, the way they talk to the coaches sometimes, wow. So I rather coach at the back. I really, you know, really... Why? Is it that you don't want to take responsibility? It's not that I don't want... If you want to give me a responsibility, I don't want to do it for free. Okay. Pay for my time. Describe a feeling the day you won the first medal, that 1996 medal. It was the race of my life. You know, for me to medal, and I was like, wow, me, Falilat, the first. And I can hear the commentator saying, she's the first. Any other person, she's the first to win an individual medal for, for Nigeria. I was very, very happy because I would, that's one thing I always look forward to, Olympic medal. And for, to be the first, and then bronze, an African record. Wow. Um, what has the, the government been able to compensate you with, with all these victories and all these wins, you know? I think uh, when we came back, the government in section then, I think they gave us, well, gave us money for gold, silver, bronze. And then there was an award from the the. The money was it enough to buy you a car, a house? No, a no, pair no, of no, shoes? no, 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 no. I can buy I can buy a shoe, but not a car, <laughs> not a pair of shoes. <laughs> and I remember she, uh, our former president, she fully said, Mwabasojo gave us a, an award, presidential award. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Is that where you got your M O N? It was when we came back from 96, all the medalists was giving them more in. Now let's talk about Farilad, the very last day you, you made that decision not to run again. What happened? I think uh, I just I woke up, I, I came to all Nigeria and, and there was a competition in 2003. And when I was running, I looked at myself that I knew that because I just had a knee surgery and I was coming back. And I was not happy, but you know, the government couldn't pay for my surgery. I wrote letters for them to pay for it, and and I was still competing with the, you know, injury with the injury, and and I look at myself that I think it's better to just call it a quit. Supposing Falila you are appointed minister of sports, what would be the first thing you do? The first thing is that to call all the stakeholders. All the companies. Because when I see Nigerian doing art on international TV and they pay a lot of money for it, and I see sports, the one thing that unites all of us, the one thing that we all shout about, the one thing that you are, you are the coach. Why the coach is doing like that? Why is the athlete is running like that? Why are you playing football like that? That's only one thing that unites all of us. That's only one thing we enjoy. They need to come and support it. And then you will see, wonder how well you will see that all these athletes will perform. So you think that it is lack of support that we could have won more laurels, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, all the people that have competed for Nigeria, what have they done for them? Don't let the athletes get sick before you support them. 
give them support while they are competing. Because Olympics is every four, four years. World Cup is every four, four years. African Championships every year for athletics. Every two, two years for football. Why can't we prepare for that long term, not last minute stuff, you know? You can um, open your eyes or close your eyes. I hope it's about sport, though. Well, who knows? That is your question. Now, you read it out to us uh -huh. and let's know. How did you meet your husband? Whoa. Do you know, I had that in mind. How did you meet your husband? Because, I mean, was it on the tracks or after running or what? It could have been even at the, at the disco. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? I think I met Shewun. That's his name, Shewun. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a government house. Okay. Did, did you marry him because he's Shewun? No. Okay. Oh, uh, I think we met at a Ogun State government house. I I received a call from the our former governor of Ogun State, which is uh, Otuma. Being a Daniel mm -hmm. before the National Sport Festival Gateway Games 2006. Mm -hmm. And then he was the one that I introduced us. He said, and then he called him that you should come, that we want to have a compete, uh, like this Gateway Games is going to happen. And then he came, and that's how we met. What did he say to you? I think he said, uh, okay, do you know her? And he said, Yes, and he asked me, "Did you know him?" I said, "No." You know, because you know everybody knows. So, so he, he then he now said, "You must marry each other." Or what? No, he gave us a job to do. Okay, and the rest was history. He is into sports as well. He's yes, he's civil... sports, sports psychologist. Oh, you, you athletes keep marrying people in the same field as you. Sports. <laughs> I was going to say to you, did you? contemplate marrying your husband after your career in athletics or during your career but i've realized now that you have a 26 year old son yeah my son who is in the military in the u.s mm. how does he feel about you i think he's very proud he's very proud and He's obviously not proud of the Nigerian military. Otherwise, why is he in the American <laughs> I mean, military? Because he was born in the U.S. and then that is he just decided that he wants to go in. So he just wants to remain in the U.S. military. So when there is time to evacuate <laughs> the mother and the father, he'll be in the position. To, I'm just joking. <laughs> but how is he doing anyway? He's is not he? into sports, is he? Oh, he ran for Weber State. He ran 100 meters, uh, you know. He also, you know, Weber State is a high league, high league university. It's in Utah, you know. And then, and Utah is very, very cold. And then he ran for his school. And after school, he decided to go into the military. Does he have brothers and sisters? No, no. He's an only child. Mm, yes. Wow, must be, you know, treating him like an egg. Oh, uh, you know, when he knows, so that I said, you don't know, my mom is tough. <laughs> because she's looking at me the way I'm on the track, you know. We need to tell the kids of nowadays, this one is no good. That one's good. The right part. I read somewhere, you know, some information <laughs> that um, the day you were getting married, your husband proposed to you with a check. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Really? Mm. How much money was in that check? I can't even remember. He just, no, don't tell me he that. Just, it's not that a lot of money. No, so but I think he just wanted to tell me that uh, uh, that is the joke of it. How did you recover the money? I did recover the money, but I can't remember how much. But I know it's not a lot of money. And that's what made you accept, you know, marriage? No, I know there's a lot of things around it before, but... You just, you know, I was just surprised. Like, okay, uh, what he's saying is that, okay, you want me to be now not a good guy or not a guy. Did you still go to the bank? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> of course I okay. Did. <laughs> now, I know you were talking about supporting uh, someone like Blessing Okagbari. 
What future do you think she has again, you know, in athletics? Do you think she has still mm, much uh, to do? When I say know, support, do? not only blessing, all these athletes that are doing very well. You see Blessing, uh, we have Divine is doing very wonderful. Ooh, happened in 6, 1970, he's doing very well. All those guys, I believe they can medal in this World Championship in the relay, and hopefully Divine can medal too in the either 100 or 200 meters, the way he's racing now. Those people need to be managed. You need to... Don't wait until you know they come to that competition for you to. You must prepare. You must give them money every month for them to prepare for the competition. They need to eat good food. They cannot stay where there's no light because when you finish the, your, your training, the all the training will go to waste. So, what are the five items you take along with you? I hope there's internet there. So I can take my iPad. Yeah. I can take my training shoe. Mm -hmm. Are you going to jog? I'll be walking. You'll be walking? Yes. Okay. So I won't get bored. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will take my Tessie bag and I will take Tide. I have to wear, you know, something that I can wear to, for me to be able to walk. And then I will take a bottle of water. Wow. That's it. Mm. What worries you most about Nigeria? I think my the thing that really worries me, concerns me, are the athletes. Nigerian is both men and women. You know, we, it's something that as an athlete, you compete for your country, you do all you can. And when I see this upcoming one, during my own days, it, it was my parents gave me a lot of support. I was born to be premature, and my mom wanted to protect me. Think she think I'm going to bend, you know. So, and when I look at these athletes now, they have to struggle. They struggle a lot. If I tell you how much I spent, mm -hmm. because they want to go to meet your own personal money, my own personal money. They want to go to meet. They need to go there. They need to have accommodation. They need to train. If we are complaining that we are not doing the way we're supposed to, what is the government doing? What is the companies doing? What is the individual? There's some individual in this country that has a lot of money. What are they doing? The athlete, because when they call their name, then they will call Nigeria. Mm. Or they later, then they will later, they don't. That's, oh, is that person from Nigeria? I want the athletes to be okay. I want them to do very well. I want Nigeria name to be back on the map in the world. That's really concerns me a lot. You know? Apart from winning medals, what has been the best thing that ever happened to you in your life? The best thing, I have to thank my parents for having me. Because they told my mother that uh, because I was born seven months, I was three months in the in the hospital when my mother had me. And the people that, uh, uh, don't tell people you have baby, oh. don't let them know. She's so tiny. She go, your back, she going to do this. But my parents stuck by me and this, my mother was then there <clears throat> in the hospital for three months, right beside me, dead, saying that, uh, looking at me that in an in incubator. And I have to thank my parents. And I have to thank the people where I come from. Does your husband feel good when you're just called only Falila to Gunkoya and Miss Aldo <laughs> How does you he feel? You are still married to your father. <laughs> yes? Is that how you feel? No, you know, it's because people know Falila Togukoya, you know, Falila Togukoya. Even in US, they call me Fali. Okay. Without even the Ogunkoya? No, not even Falila. Oh, they call you Fali? Fali. Oh, Fali. Thank you again for being on the program. You're welcome. I am Manny. It's been the chat. 
See you again. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you.